AV Rant and SVS have teamed up to bring you an unbelievable opportunity. Have you been dreaming of dual subwoofers? Perhaps you'd like to upgrade your entire 5.1 speaker package. Don't have the cash? AV Rant and SVS have your back. Go to www.avrant.com right now for your chance to win your choice of dual PB1000 subwoofers or a prime 5.1 satellite speaker package. Contest ends September 30th. Don't wait. Open to the residents of the United States and Canada. We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Mantry and I'm here with Rob H. Michael. Michael's having some serious frustration using his new HTPC when it comes to audio. Well, did you make a video for this guy? I did, but yeah. there's other things going on. Yeah, that happens. Uh, the sources he would like to play using his HGPC are I. I'm sorry. I'm, it says what? I. I know what. We One. already use numbers. We already use letters. So this is listing. MKV Blu-ray disc backups that he made using Make MKV that are and that are being organized by a Plex Media server. Okay. I I or two. Netflix I I I or three. Google Play Music and Google Play Movies. Okay, those are the three things he wants. MKB, yes. Flex stuff, uh, Netflix, and Google. Which Google is going to change pretty soon anyways to Google Pixel <laughs> Play. Maybe. Because they hate you. Uh, he did not purchase a Plex Pass. So he was using the playback feature that it is that is offered directly in the Plex Media server. He also tried using Power DVD, VLC, and the Windows 10 film and TV player. No matter what he used, the only audio signal his dinner receiver would show was 7.1 multi-channel <laughs> in. Yup. <laughs> Did he make some incorrect connection? Is there really no way to get Dolby True HD and DTS Monster Audio to show up? Well, you, not unless you can bitstream it out. Yeah. And if good. you can't bitstream it out, then you're going to get... Like when I connect my Xbox, it says 7.1 because uh, unless I'm watching a Blu-ray uh, and then it'll... No, I think it even says 7.1 then too, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean... Yeah. The, the, this I have was... to actually check. The uh, I have to check because I, I I play Blu-rays with my PlayStation and I click on the select button or whatever it is and it'll tell me that I'm getting master audio there the mm -hmm. DTS MA or or Dolby True HD I'll get it there but my receiver always says seven point one multi channel yeah no th this was the reason why I was so strongly recommending that we use the uh, the Plex Media Player app because that does allow the bitstream output but currently you need to have a plex pass in order to do that uh so he was trying to do it for free which i completely understand um but yeah the same thing when i try it in power dvd it either reverts to the dts core audio Ugh. or it has to do the decoding itself in which case you'll get 7.1 pcm which is the same thing but you wouldn't be able to use it for atmos or dts x because those require bitstream output so yeah the it's the plex media player that you need uh and we've already confirmed this via email so he's okay with that that's all right so just to reconfirm play netflix and the browse files for results in the multi uh multi-channel in sound mode on this AV well, their Windows Netflix app does show Dolby Digital Plus, but it's very inaccessible from a Michael screen reader program. Yeah. So again, I, that's what I get to, and I set yep. my receiver for five, you know, for uh, 5.1 out or whatever, so that if I'm using Netflix, because you're not going to get 7.1 and, and the, the Xbox doesn't do it right. The, the PlayStation will, will, will send the round yeah. the right way. <laughs> When he tries to play content from uh, Google Play Music or Google Play Movies, these also show up as 7.1 multi-channel in, but they are two-channel stereo sources. The problem is that multi-channel multi in signal doesn't allow him to select his usual up-mixing surround modes like ProLogic or DTS Neo X. AVS Forum said to set his window sound output settings to two-channel, and doing so works. But Rob said to always set the window sound output settings to 7.1 in this tutorial. So what should Michael do? Right, so... 
if <laughs> if you, you are getting bitstream output for everything that you want in surround sound, right? So if you're using the Plex Media Player app, and that way you're getting bitstream output for your MKV Blu-ray backups, and you're using the Netflix app so that you're getting Dolby Digital Plus bitstream output for your Netflix streams, then yes, setting your Windows sound settings to two-channel might be nicer for things that are two-channel, like Google Play Music, because that way you can use Dolby Pro Logic or something like that if you want to upmix it, right? I was saying set it to 7.1 in your uh, Windows sound settings because if the player, like, say, Power DVD, is doing the decoding and you've set Windows sound to two-channel, well, everything's getting down mixed to two-channel no matter what you yeah. do. So this is a little bit application-dependent. In Michael's case, since what he wants is bitstream output for his MKVs and he's willing to use the Plex Media Player app to do that, and he wants Dolby Digital Plus bitstream output from Netflix, which is a hassle for him, but at least it can be done, then for two-channel sources, yes, this is the way because he wants to use an upmixer. I have to say, if all you want to do is listen in stereo, then the 7.1 output is fine. You just go over to stereo listening mode in your AV receiver, which will still work just fine with a 7.1 PCM signal. But in his particular case, we sorted this out by email as well. So, okay, he'll set his window sound to two, and he'll set other things to bitstream out. That can be done. All right. Well, I, Michael, I do the same thing with my... I'm trying to use my Xbox One for everything. And what I was doing is when I was watching anything like Netflix or YouTube or Vudu or any of those things, where it's a 5.1 max output, I was setting the output to 5.1 PCM out. Mm -hmm. It would then send everything. And if it was two channel, I was going to host. But uh, I would send everything out by you know 5.1. And then I set my receiver for uh, DTS game mode or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It would say on the on the front of the receiver, it would say multi-channel in mm -hmm. 5.1 plus Neo X, mm -hmm. something like that. I don't really remember what that says because I can't see the receiver from where I sit when I'm watching TV. And then it takes the five channel and it's, uh, it uses the back channels. Yeah, it turns so it into seven, you, yeah. Yeah, you could take your you know every time you're changing your source i mean how often do you do this because what was happening with me is i didn't watch blu-rays that often so it was easier for me to set it for 5.1 and just leave it there and then every once in a while when they were watching blu-ray i would switch it to seven uh the 7.1 so i got the full 7.1 <laughs> it shouldn't be this so depth. much of a hassle like just uh, i just want the microsoft sound. literally hates me i, I just literally want the Bill sound Gates hates that's me. there just give it to me the way it's supposed to be yeah i know why my new solution is to leave the, the Xbox on 5.1 all the time. Yeah. And when I want to watch anything else that's not 5.1, I go into the, I just use the PlayStation 3. Yeah. Which there you works go. just fine. I should use the Xbox for everything, but I feel like I don't want to. All right. As far as accessibility goes for set top boxes, he's tried Apple TV, Nvidia Shield TV, and Chromecast. It's Apple TV one since, uh, only the included Android apps on the Shield are accessible uh, uh, for uh, his, his reader. reader, I guess, a yeah. screen reader, right? So third-party apps like Kodi and Plex are not. Physical Blu-ray disc rentals are becoming basically unavailable in Canada now. So if he wants to rent the newest releases, what are his best options? iTunes, Google Play, Xbox Live? Can't stream through, you can't rent through Amazon up there? Nope. Really? <laughs> We don't have Amazon Prime it's Video. It sucks living in Canada. It does. What's it like yeah. back there? We don't in have the, we don't have Voodoo. Ages. We don't have Voodoo. We don't have Hulu. So yeah, it, it's. You feel kind of about uh, hey? You want to really pull your hair out there, Michael? You want to set up a VPN? Yeah, that'll take that'll <laughs> that'll that'll drive you crazy. There's that. So I mean, we have Show Me and we have Crave TV, but those are similar to Netflix in that they have these libraries and it's older content. It's not new releases. Yeah. So he's like, look, I just want to rent new releases like we used to. We used to go to the video store, right? On the weekend, the new movies would come out yeah. and rent the new releases. How do you do yeah. that these days? Honestly, in Canada, most people are doing it through their cable provider. Most people are using the cable providers, um, you know, video on demand, on demand service, right? Now, I think Michael still has some kind of satellite or cable service. You can probably just use their video on demand. That's how most people are doing it, honestly. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, there's one service called Cinema Now. Uh, in Canada, it's Best Buy that basically runs the I, I don't know what the affiliation is cinema now is its own company in the states but i i don't exactly know how it works but anyway 
They have the new releases. It's five ninety nine to rent an HD movie, but at least they have DTS audio. Now here's the big problem, because I know he wants surround sound, and they they're using DTS Express. All right, that's the but it's five point one DTS Express. You can't <laughs> you can't even watch HD off of any Windows PC using the Canadian version of Cinema Now. They don't support it in their web application. They don't support it in their, like, Windows application. I don't know why. But you can't even watch HD, let alone surround sound, all right? You have to use one of the apps. And the only apps that work are the PlayStation 3 app and the Xbox One app. So if you don't have one of those, you're hosed, as far as Cinema Now goes. <laughs> the Roku app I'm is sorry. stereo only. The Apple TV app, it's stereo only. It's, it it's, should it's a, not be this hard. It is a crap show up here. Now, Cineplex, which is like the only movie theater chain left in Canada, they do have their own service, but it's all stereo audio. So honestly, yeah. on, honestly, Michael, iTunes in Canada is your best choice. It really is. Because at least you get Dolby Digital 5.1. They have all the movies. The price is the same as Cinema Now. It's still five ninety nine. but at least you get HD, and at least it works on a computer, which you have now. You have a home theater PC. I assume that's what you want to use. Or you have an Apple TV. It also works fantastic on an Apple TV. So honestly, in Canada, iTunes is probably your best bet. But I'll mention Cinema Now in case. If you want to check it out, do their free trial. VPN. Yeah. VPN to America. And then get stuff from Amazon. <laughs> hey, you know what? I am not about pirating, but if you're going to willingly pay for something, and to, you have to VPN to this do it. This is why people it, like Cody. Ridiculous. This is why people like Cody in Canada. Because, well, but then again, I mean, Cody will, Cody does a great job on MKVs playing the lossless audio and everything like that it's just the interface if you want you can make a cody interface really pretty it's just a lot of work that's all uh that's why people like plex because it's all automatic so. want your question answered send it to question at avrant.com Is A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.